We know that shearers uh, and people in the, wool, in the wool handlers as well, we know that the occupations in the wool harvesting industry carry high risk of injury. It is known that the risk of injury for putting in a claimable injury in Australia is six times greater than the average number of claims for shearers. In New Zealand, it is close to four times greater, similar. So the injury risk for these occupational groups are high. A lot of those injuries appear, other than there are knee and hand and wrist, but they're also the lumbar spine, the low back is at high risk of injury. We feel that these adaptive changes in posture that we're seeing, these uh, uh, changes in movements, uh, the discomfort you see in the people socially and clinically are indications of adverse adaptive changes in the body. And ultimately, if they are not addressed by the shearer, if they're not addressed by the wool handler, the uh, risk of injury is going to increase substantially. So there are, it is felt, we feel, that there is high potential for shearers to address and help prevent a lot of their own problems and, and or manage a lot of their own problems. Prevention is a big issue to try and minimise risk of injury. If shearers are showing this dramatic increase in flexion, but at a price of losing a huge amount of the ability to extend, getting discomfort in standing and showing adaptive posture. These are because the body is adapting to the physical demands of the job. The question that arises, can we introduce a program of activity, exercise and advice for these wool harvesting professions in order to try and reverse some of the effects that have changed, uh, that have occurred? We don't necessarily want to lose the ability to flex that they've gained. That's, a, that's an important attribute that they've got. But this loss of extension is a concern, particularly when we look at some of the uh, pathology and the anatomy of the disc, uh, the lumbar discs. <clears throat> the, the loss of extension and the adaptive postural change is probably linked to adverse changes. And what we need to do is consider ways of regaining that flexibility backwards and regaining our posture in order to, um, to try and minimise risk within the industry itself. And there are certain, I feel there are certain procedures and simple measures that the shearing um, a profession can undertake. We've also recently completed some more research and we've had it published in a number of journals. And uh, this has been research that we've done in New Zealand in collaboration with the health, funded by the Health Research Council and in, uh, with strong collaboration uh, uh, with the shearing instructors associated with Meat and Wool New Zealand. Essentially what we did, we got a group uh, of shearers and that we could divide into a number of open class or the highest elite class of shearers and another group that we could divide into the senior class. And we looked at a number of uh, mathematical models, this is occupational and spinal biomechanics, essentially human engineering, to try and determine the forces in the low back of the shearers, of the 12 the, the shearers uh, participating in the study. And what we found, what, among some, many of the results we found, but in particular as it relates to skill, is we looked at ACE, we looked at triaxial or three-dimensional spinal movement to see what sort of spinal movements are required during shearing. And one of the very interesting results we found from this study on skill, comparing open class to senior shearers and looking at three-dimensional spinal movement patterns was that both the open and senior class shearers required the same amount of forward bending in order to be able to undertake their activities. The interesting thing, we could also divide movements into three axes. One of them is forward bending, we could do side bending, and we could do the rotational components of the functional activities of when a person shears. So when a person shears, they can bend forward, they can lean sideways, 
and they can rotate at the same time. So we had the ability with our technology to measure the spinal movements of those uh, two different skill groups within shearing. And the open class and the senior shearers had about the same amount of spinal uh, flexion or spinal bending forwards. They had about the same amount of spinal sideways bending. What we did find, and it was quite a relatively strong result, was the open class shearers had, uh, had less amounts, required amounts of rotation. So what we were seeing with the open class shearers was less of this requirement compared to the senior shearers. So our open class shearers are showing, in the study that we did, were showing uh, a reduced amount of asymmetric spinal movement. And what that is indicating to us is that the open class shearers had no great differences uh, in age, height, weight, and there were no great physical differences between the two groups. So what we're seeing with these open class shearers is less uh, spinal movement asymmetry. Now, with no difference in age, height and weight between the two subgroups of open and senior class shearers, that implied that they were both removing the wool in similar fashion, but the open class shearers could do it with less asymmetric uh, extreme spinal movements which has to be a good thing to do. So if they were using less asymmetric spinal movement, there can only truly be one answer. And that is when they were bent forward doing their tasks, the senior shearers were tending to use their legs less around the sheep and in their manoeuvres around it and stepping around it. And the open class shearers were moving considerably more around the sheep with their feet in order to reduce movements in their spine. Now that is accepted almost by anyone as a highly desirous thing to do. Reduce asymmetric movements in the spine, increase activity of the legs and the feet when you're doing functional activities. And what you're then seeing is the influence of skill in reducing potential risk of injury in the low back showing less three-dimensional movement or less asymmetric movement, less twisting movements, less rotation, and less rotation in the base of the spine. So our open class shearers, if I've got a sheep in front of me, are tending to move around the sheep with their legs, and the senior shearers were tending to, tending to move more around the sheep with their spine and less with their legs. Now this evidence was relatively strong that this, the open class shearers were showing less extremes of movement, they were still bent forward, but less extremes of asymmetry in the low back and there's strong research evidence. You reduce asymmetry, even though the loads may be similar, you reduce asymmetry, there is an argument that you may reduce risk the results of this study have been passed on to the meat and wool people and now to Australian Wool Innovation as a strong indicator of the benefit of the programs that they are developing to use highly skilled shearers and highly skilled individuals who exhibit these patterns and these activities of moving around the sheep and trying to minimise the amount of rotation or asymmetry in the spine. It is a highly desirous attribute to have. And I would commend the training programs within New Zealand and Australia that, are, that, are, that have been undertaking um, th these, mo these movement and training directions. There are certain, there are quite a few exercises and activities that shearers should consider undertaking when they're not working. Uh, what you would have seen also in this DVD, you would have seen Dwayne Black uh, talk about things you can do during morning tea, afternoon tea, lunchtime, where instead of sitting after a prolonged burst of shearing, that things, simple things can be done. Getting up and walking around, lying on your back, stretching your spine out, doing some extension movements, just to try and reverse the effect of the loads on your spine. 
You've also got to recall that shearers drive in a van to the shed, they drive home in a van uh, to the, from the shed. And so that often can take at least an hour of driving time. So not only are you doing an eight hour working day, plus an, an hour of breaks, you're also looking at an hour to work, an hour to, from work, and you're looking at between 10 to 12 hours a day where a shearer may end up in a prolonged bent position, either from head down, bum up while they're shearing, or sitting uh, It's either smoke over in the van. That's a huge amount of time for any person to be in a prolonged bent position. And it takes a considerable effort to try and change the postures and the adaptations that, that, that the shearer has been involved with. So to get home, my advice, to get home from shearing and to immediately sit down to have a beer and just relax in front of a television and do next to nothing for two to three hours is totally detrimental to the shearer's health, to his spinal health. And one of the things a lot of shearers need to do, if you've put in 10 to 12 hours a day of either being bent forward shearing or bent sitting, that's a huge load in the bent position in the low back and it needs to be reversed. And to reverse that effect does not occur in 10 minutes. You can do short minute, but 10 minute bursts during the working day, it's smoker and lunchtime and those things. But to truly get an effect on that 10 hours of adaptive posture, you're looking at close to two hours of trying to change it, if not more. And some of the things that, that, that shearers should truly consider doing. Uh, number one, you've seen it mentioned a number of times in the, ta in the, in the DVD. Uh, number one of the number one exercises is to walk. Walking is a totally underrated exercise, yet it is number one. It is what we are designed to do on the planet, to be at 90 degrees to the planet's surface and moving in a walking direction. The spine is straight, the spine is moving from side to side when we walk and it gently rotates as well as we walk. And that movement, this walking movement and the rhythmical up and down as we, as we take step to step is essentially one of the prime nutritional pumps of the spine. It's terribly important that the spine is exposed to it it helps reduce the stresses and the loads that have accumulated during the day and, and very, very important. So sometime when you're getting back from work, at, when you're home at the end of the day, finding time to go for a walk is terribly, terribly important. Other exercises that uh, are worth considering is once you've got home, you've had your shower, uh, lying on the floor on your back to straighten your spine out, lying on the floor on your stomach to try and straighten your spine out further, lying on the floor on your stomach, on your elbows to try and straighten and extend the spine out even further, are terribly important things to consider. If you're already showing in your own examination of yourself adaptive changes that you can see in yourself, wonderful ability to flex, but you're truly struggling to stand for long periods of time and truly struggling to extend backwards, you need to get into this program. You need to get into increasing your walking activity and you need to get into bouts and bursts of lying down to try and straighten the spine out. It may take some time to adapt to it all, but it is worth attempting and worth undertaking. A number, I've been exposed to a considerable number of shearers over a long period of time. And socially you meet, uh, meet them and some of the anecdotal stories that I've had, had as to how they cope, show how different people have developed own, their own strategies to try and help themselves in their own environment, social, both socially and physically. I, now, I know of mar um, shearers have undertaken up half marathons. I know of shearers who've taken up surfing. I know of shearers who've taken up rugby and football. I know of shearers who play cricket. I know of shearers, interestingly, one in particular, who goes pig hunting and regularly walks out of a gully in the New Zealand mountains with a 160 pound boar on his back. And, and, and I know shearers who go hiking and tramping with packs on their back. And these loads, by putting packs and loads on their shoulders and walking and hunting and playing golf, 
puts a reasonable load on the top part of the body and forces the body into the upright position and makes us start to stabilise our core. They're terribly important exercises. And the more exercise and activity shearers can do in an upright position by undertaking recreational activities, by walking, social activities that do not involve prolonged bent positions is, is, is highly desirable and highly recommended for anyone in this profession.